Another new gun to review this week, and this is a new military-based replica from the guys at Sig Sauer. It's the really rather stunning-looking Sig Sauer MCX Rattler Canebrake. and welcome to AAR on Air and today we have the two-tone black and FDE MCX Rattler cane brake and I'm trying so hard not to say crane brake. I feel a few outtakes coming today. Let's take a look at this little replica then shall we? Firstly, as most of you know, the military style isn't normally my thing. But I do like this one with the oversized suppressor protruding out of the front. Let's start with a few stats, shall we? SIG state that this is 30.25 inches long, which in non-American figures is just under 770 millimetres, which is really quite short, even for a carbine. It does feel every bit like a realistic replica with a hefty 7.5 pounds or 3.4 kilograms weight to it, which is a bit of a clue to its construction materials. The barrel is quite short on this and could have a bearing on the accuracy in the target testing a little later. Overall, I do like the mix of black and sand colours. Starting from the front, as I've said, the black oversized silencer or suppressor or whatever you're happy is calling it, has a diameter of just under 40 millimetres and has a recess in the end to replicate the original. This disappears behind that M-lock and has an overall length of around 180 millimetres. This does form part of the barrel on this and doesn't seem to be removable. Moving down we come to the front sight which is flip up and can be moved along the Picatinny rail or even removed and is adjustable. Below this is that M-lock which is polymer composite and doubles up as the foregrip. Moving back we then come to the sand or FDE coloured main body which is metal and adds to that weighty feel that I mentioned. This is nicely balanced off with the black catches and latches and mechanisms. The printed wording is tastefully done with no big bold garnish white lettering to spoil the look. The 30 round belt fed magazine is on the underside and is probably my only bit of a gripe with this beautiful military carbine because this is plastic and whilst it looks excellent it's a bit of a shock when you remove it and realise that it's about as heavy as a box of helium balloons. It's not a deal breaker but would benefit from a metal one in my opinion. Next along is the trigger which is really quite nice considering it is responsible for operating the 30 round belt fed magazine system. It is skeletal in design and continues that sand colour theme. Above this is the ambidextrous safety latch which on this UK version has a safe or single round or semi-automatic fire mode only. No fully automatic here, I'm afraid. But this is very sure and definite to give you that reassurance and can easily be thumb operated. The release for that magazine is on the right hand side and is a simple push button and it drops cleanly out. Most of the other catches, etc., are beautifully contrasted in black, but mostly for show for that replica look rather than being fully functional. The black grip is amazingly angled and still feels very comfortable in use. The rear sights on the back of that full length Picatinny rail is also pop up and adjustable with a choice of sighting options. Again, this can be removed if preferred. This does seem to cry out for a really nice red dot or military style scope or even both with a 45 degree attachment. That would be really cool. 
The fixed non-adjustable buttstock is black polymer with a rubber recoil pad on the back and doubles up as the slide-on cover for the 88 gram CO2. Of course, if you don't want to use the more expensive 88 gram CO2s, you can always use an adapter and then use the cheaper 12 gram CO2s if you prefer, but naturally your shot count will be greatly reduced depending on if you're using one or two CO2 capsules in the adapter. To load this up with the CO2, it's a simple process of removing that stock and screwing in your preferred source and then return the rear stock. Let's take a look at loading up the magazine, shall we? This is a pellet firing gun and will accept most pellets within reason. I wouldn't try and load any long pointed items because it may cause an issue and it's pretty pointless really because ordinarily I would say that this isn't a real serious hunting tool after all. Hmm. The magazine, as you can see, simply drops out of the main body by depressing that release button on the right hand side. Once out, you have a couple of options to load up the 30 rounds of pellets. You can simply load them up individually by dropping them in through the top, being careful to make sure they're seated home. It may be beneficial to use some sort of probe to make sure they're sat correctly. The other option is you can open up the side and pull the entire belt system out and load it on the table. Please though, make sure you insert the pellets in the right way round and then you return the belt into the magazine housing carefully and again the right way round. And there you have it. You know, I have heard of people complain about the Sig Sauer belt system in the past. And I must say, I've never had an issue. And I do wonder if it's been returned to the magazine correctly and without damage and clean, rather than getting dirt into the whole mechanism. Once you're unloaded up, return to the carbine and you're ready to go. So, before we hit the range, let's take a look at the power level, shall we? Now, SIGs state up to 600 feet per second. And then add the usual disclaimer of subject to ammo, temperature and altitude. Well, I'm about 90 metres above sea level on a warm, dry day. I'll be using pretty standard 8.44 grain JSB pellets. And I saw 633 feet per second, which is around 7.51 foot pounds or 10.18 joules. Just for good measure, I thought I would drop in some lighter BSA Green Star alloy pellets, which are much lighter at 6.64 grains. And they saw 703 feet per second, which is 7.29 foot pounds or 9.88 joules well above the SIG claim. And with figures like those, this is starting to look like a serious replica and could even be used for a spot of close-up rat work. Maybe. But it's powerful enough for some target work and some serious plinking capabilities. Time, I think, to get some optics on this and try it out for accuracy. Well, my choice of optics on this occasion is a Vector Optics Mustang 1 to 4 by 32 Gen 2, which isn't a high magnification scope, but for closer works should be spot on, and it looks the part too. With this fitted and zeroed, let's try it out at about 20 metres, shall we? Here goes.
That's pretty acceptable, I would say, and it's likely to do some serious damage to any attacking tin cans or annoying rats in a barn-type environment. But be careful, because if the neighbours see you with this stunning-looking replica, they may well get the wrong idea. This really is great fun and it encourages you to use this in rapid fire style. You know, that's the way to do it, trying to get as many shots off as quickly as possible. It really needs to have a spare magazine or two with those preloaded up because loading 30 rounds into any magazine is quite a time-consuming activity and takes you off from vital trigger time. No fault of the gun, it simply encourages you to send so many pellets down range as fast as you can. It's great fun. This is definitely one for the military favouring guys out there and is really nicely made and has a quality and feel to it. There is a whole load of people who get great pleasure from these kinds of air guns and using this I fully understand where they're coming from. Air gunning doesn't always have to be serious, down the range, target focused. There are so many disciplines in air gunning, and there are also the guys who are more collectors out there too. And this is likely to tick most all of their boxes, as well as being sought after by some of the more serious shooters too. It isn't as quiet as you would expect from a gun with an apparent silencer as large as this one has, but it isn't overly loud either. It simply has enough of a bark to add to the overall experience without disturbing the neighbourhood too much. For a non-military style guy, I do like this. The whole package and feel does it for me. It doesn't feel like some plastic toy. It feels like a true replica that shoots and pretty hard too. Price-wise, I suppose this quality does come at a slightly higher price. It retails out at about £399 UK. I do believe the guys at Vector Air are putting a package together to make this more attractive too, with loads of extras and this scope. Well, that's it from me. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share, hit the alarm notification bell. But, as most of you regulars know, you can pretty much set your clock by the channel at 7am on a Friday morning. You can also join in the forums and channels etc below and merch is available from Mrs AAR on the AAR website. And of course, a big thank you to Vector Air for getting me this MCX2 review. It's a tough job doing this, you know, but somebody has to do it. Thanks, guys. Above all... Of course, thank you for watching. Stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully, I'll see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>